स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया solutions right now before we move on we are going to talk about laplace equation in this video laplace equation so this is our continuation video on laplace equation and essentially um, let let us just uh, clear it up what we exactly want to achieve here so essentially uh, we are going to talk about this is what we need to understand the well posedness well posedness of the Dirichlet problem Dirichlet problem given by I will explain why I call it a Dirichlet problem given by minus Laplacian of u equals to f in omega as usual omega is an open subset of r n and u restricted to the boundary of omega is g okay this is the problem so as you can understand this is a Poisson problem right it's a Poisson equation because Laplacian of is equals to 0 this is called the Poisson equation if you remember okay this is after a mathematician by the name of Poisson and a French mathematician and uh, if f equals to 0 that's a Laplace equation if uh, uh, if you have an arbitrary f that's not Poisson equation and u when you restrict u to the boundary of omega that is going to be uh, some function g now here here f and g are given smooth functions okay given smooth functions i mean here i am not exactly specifying what sort of functions are there but let's just assume there are smooth functions okay so why it is called Dirichlet? let's understand this thing see uh, let's say you are given a Poisson equation, right? L minus Laplacian of u equals to f. Yeah. With this, you can specify different type of boundary conditions. Yeah. So first of all, let us look at the equation and the boundary conditions. So different boundary conditions, different boundary conditions. Let us assume that you are given a Poisson equation which looks like this Laplacian of u equals to f okay let's call that one so one plus this boundary condition that u restrict to the boundary is g g is some function so essentially you are given the information on u in the domain so Laplacian of u you know that it is equals to f in omega and the boundary on the boundary the unknown function u will look like g yeah if this sort of boundary condition is given, we call it a Dirichlet boundary condition. Dirichlet boundary. Clear? Yeah? Dirichlet boundary. Now, let's say that 1 is given plus this sort of boundary condition is given. Del u del gamma uh, at the boundary. Okay. That is equals to g, let's say. Okay. Where gamma is the unit outward normal outward normal okay to del omega okay if that is the case then this sort of boundary condition is called the Neumann condition right? this is called a how do I put it so that this is called a Neumann condition Neumann boundary Okay. There are other boundary conditions also. Let me give you another example. So let's say that's 0, 1, that's 0, 2 and 3. There are other boundary conditions you can just specify. But for now, we'll just give another condition. So 1 plus, okay. So obviously this equation is there. Equation plus a boundary condition. Okay. The boundary conditions look like this. Something like, let's say, u plus del u del gamma, del gamma okay so this whole thing restricted to del omega let's say that is equals to g okay 
So uh, you have this equation and you have this boundary condition u plus del u del gamma restricted to the boundary is g. Yeah, this sort of boundary condition is called a, a mixed boundary condition. Mixed boundary condition. Okay. Now there are other conditions also. So let's say in some part of the boundary, let's say uh, so let's say this is your omega. Okay, that's your omega. Let's say this is your omega and that's your boundary, right? Now it may happen that in this part of the boundary, let's put it in red color. It may happen that you are given a boundary condition like in this part of the boundary it is uh, g and uh, in this part of the boundary so u is g here on the boundary okay and uh, del u del eta let's say that is uh, some h some function h on this part of the boundary okay on this part okay it may happen that uh, you are given this equation and this sort of boundary condition yeah and that may also happen so there are different options, but for now we will just restrict ourselves to the Dirichlet boundary condition. Okay, so let's see what happens. So Dirichlet, Dirichlet problem. We say it is a Dirichlet problem. Clear? Okay. How does the Dirichlet problem look like? Minus Laplacian of u equals to f in omega. Okay, and u restricted it to the boundary del omega this is going to be g hmm? and we'll assume and we'll assume f is in c of omega and g is in c omega del omega okay the continuous on the boundary and f is continuous on omega so well, this is the only condition which i'm just taking now the thing is this what do we need to do here if you remember properly when um, working with this sort of problem we said that uh, our main motivation to um, study this sort of problem is the following we need to we need to understand that oh, of course okay here whenever we're doing omega is assumed to be a open connected set in R and clear. So that is always as you. Now, F is continuous and G is continuous on the boundary. We want to talk about the well posedness of the problem. Well posedness of, let's say that's your one of one. Okay, well posedness of one. Okay, now, First of all, let us start with this thing. See, we, we will not directly attack this problem, okay? We will take it part by part. So first of all, what we are going to do is we are going to assume, yeah? We are going to assume that, uh, so well postness. What does well postness? if you remember? First thing is existence, right? Existence. So first of all, you have to find that if there is a solution or not. Number two, uniqueness. That is that if there is a solution, is it unique? And number three is the stability. Stability is, I mean, how does the solution behave? Uh, so the solution must be small when the initial data is small. So basically, let, let me write it as uh, uh, stability of initial condition. Stability of initial condition. Let us put it this way, okay? Initial data, okay? Now, let us look at what are the problems associated to this okay so let us from see most of you guys i am quite sure you know let us say if i am asking you to solve this problem laplacian of u equals to zero in omega clear okay and omega is given to be something like this let's say in two dimension yeah so this is just a motivation motivation in two dimension let's say it will look like this right a b cross c d yeah so in this uh, thing i want to solve this equation yeah so in this uh, rectangle let's say um, i don't know maybe something like this huh? so this is ab cross cd this rectangle r let's say this is omega yeah this is omega now if i'm asking you to solve this problem what do you do you can use the separation of variable right and what is it just uh, roughly speaking it will look like this so you are basically looking trying to find a you know, solution u of x y 
which will look like some function of x times some function of y okay now if of, of course you are thinking of this as a c2 function now since this is a solution you are thinking of this as a solution of this so you can calculate ux x uy y and after that put it in that equation given the boundary condition you can uh, use Fourier term series to find out what the solution is you, you can do that okay now let's say um, from here if i am asking you to so this can be done right so this is uh, separation of variable separation of variable uh, so as you know in the introductory video itself i have told that we are not going to study about separation of variable in this course right because i mean that's not to be very frank it's not a very interesting thing to do i mean it's just a method to solve it very significant method but uh, i mean nonetheless just one method to solve this now now uh, the thing is let's say you are go you want i'm asking you to solve this problem uh, f and omega is in a b cross c yeah how do you solve this thing so if you remember your separation of variable methods what you do is first of all you try to find try to find the eigenvalues try to solve the eigenvalue problem eigenvalue problem problem uh, Laplacian of u equals to lambda u, okay, minus Laplacian of u in, in omega, that is the omega a b cross c d, and uh, you restrict it to the boundary del omega is g, okay. Uh, you just solve, you just try to solve this um, eigenvalue problem, and then uh, I mean, you can use the data from here to actually, I mean, you can use the you know functions from here, the solutions, okay, and you can construct a solution for uh, f okay you can construct the solution for one so uh, using using the uh, linearly independent eigenfunctions so once you solve the this equation let's say this is your two once you solve two you get some eigenfunctions right so when you use this eigenfunctions i'm getting the circular okay so using the linearly independent eigenfunctions Okay, um, one can construct the solution of one, right? You, you remember, yeah? Uh, so that's your separation of variable. Now, what is the restriction with this method? See, if this method works in any given domain, then we do not have anything to do, right? I mean, there is nothing to do here. Uh, you, you can just use separation of variable to solve this problem and you can look at the explicit solution you use the explicit solution to uh, i mean th that's the point right once you get an explicit solution you do not have to do anything existence uniqueness stability all of this can be easily checked but the problem is this separation of variable please remember this thing yeah why we were doing this thing the main restriction restriction of separation of variable this method method is that it works on certain type of domains type of domains so most uh, if you remember you just work out one problem using separation of variable you will understand see if it is not in this form a b cross c d uh, not in a rectangular form then the separation of variable won't work you can think of i mean of course in the um, you know other coordinate system you can take uh, think of a circle also on a disk and all you can actually solve it but you are essentially you know whenever you are doing this change of variable to radial coordinate or spherical cylindrical coordinates you are essentially doing something like this so essentially for a domain which looks like a rectangular kind of domain or like a spherical domain that sort of domain separation of variable works okay but most of the problems which we encounter that is not a i mean not a given domain like this right i mean it can be any arbitrary domain what do you do then that's the question okay so uh, le let's look at what do we do then see what we do is this now question is well posedness for an arbitrary domain i hope i have made it clear what why we need to study this see again let me recall 
the point is this using separation of variable you can of course get an explicit solution right yeah but the problem is the domain has to be very specific and to be very precise the domain has to be a rectangular domain yeah or a circular domain that sort of thing a cylindrical domain but most of the times in applications when you talk about domains it may not look like that right the question is how do you talk about well posedness for this so you have to find an explicit solution can you always find an explicit solution the question is can one always derive an explicit solution on an arbitrary domain okay so this is the refresh version of this yeah well postness the refresh version but can you uh, uh, find an explicit solution for an arbitrary domain okay so the answer is this theoretically it is possible but uh, um, practically you can't find so practically practically not possible not possible okay theoretically it is possible we'll talk about that we'll use green's function to do that okay so let us just explore more so let us just say that uh, so there are three components right of well posedness existence uniqueness and the stability with respect to the initial data okay let us start about uh, talk about uniqueness first yeah let's just get that out of the way so consider one consider this problem let's just start with laplacian u equals to f in omega u equals to g on the boundary okay we are interested we are interested interested in the question of uniqueness first question of uniqueness now please understand that we are not we haven't talked about existence because that is a difficult part huh? first of all let us say that we will assume that there is a solution uh, we want to see that if there is one solution yeah uh, can we find other solutions from there for this problem okay that's the question see if we can find uh, if we can solve this problem if you take f equals to zero then the laplace equation is also done right okay so this is a much general problem so the question is uh, can so assume uh, therefore let's just put it this way assume one admits admits a solution u in c2 of omega bar yeah let's say that one admits a solution of uh, u in c2 of omega okay then that solution that solution is unique okay so this is a theorem i, I don't know how to uh, let's say theorem one okay so what it is essentially saying is this see uh, first of all we need to study well posedness right we do not know whether that problem has a solution or not but we are talking about uniqueness first yeah in the well posedness part three part are there we just want to talk about uniqueness first we are saying that if there is one solution yeah uh, at least one solution if you can just show that there is at least one solution you can show that that solution is unique so we are assuming that there is at least one solution we'll show that you cannot find any other solution that is only one solution okay there is only one solution to work so how do you find it let's just take look at the proof of this thing okay now i hope you understand what i meant by one solution so there is a okay maybe before i go on doing this thing let, maybe i can talk about uh, what do i mean by solution of this thing yeah it will be better that way so this is solution of one sorry i i, I just messed up the order a little bit solution of one what do i mean by a solution of one then then we can talk about this so solution of one as you can understand that a u which is in c2 omega bar okay is called called a solution 
of 1 if Laplacian of u at the point x is f of x okay for all x in omega and u restricted to boundary so u of x equals to g of x for x on the boundary of omega okay just, just your simple thing it's only that you has to be in c2 of omega bar for now okay this is what we mean by a solution so uh, we are saying that if you can find a solution for this problem then the solution is given. how do i prove this thing yeah so let let u tilde be any other solution any other solution of one clear so define define w to be u minus u tilde okay see initially we have one solution u i am also assuming that u tilde is another solution of one okay and you define w equals to u minus u tilde clear so clearly clearly w is in c2 of omega bar right c u is a solution and definitely it is in c2 of omega bar right u tilde is also a solution and what do i mean by a solution a solution to this one is a c2 of omega bar function which satisfies this so if u tilde is another solution u tilde has to be in c2 omega bar yeah so u and u tilde are both in c2 omega bar you can see that the u minus u tilde the difference of those two which is defined by w okay which is defined by w that is also in c2 of omega bar yeah? and clearly w is in c2 omega and satisfies satisfies laplacian of w equals to 0 in omega and w equals to 0 on the boundary do you agree with me c if Laplacian of W, Laplacian is a linear operator, right? So Laplacian of W is Laplacian of U minus Laplacian of U tilde. Laplacian of U is also F, Laplacian of U tilde is also F. So Laplacian of W is going to be 0. And moreover, U is G on del omega and U tilde is also G on del omega. So W uh, is, uh, so uh, W is 0 on the, uh, 0 on the boundary, right? Okay, so um, see, essentially if we define it like this w is going to solve the uh, Dirichlet problem w is equals to 0 but uh, not the Poinsot problem so it is essentially a Laplace equation yeah w solves the Laplace equation okay now what happens when it does that then you take a integration by parts okay again integration by parts use integration by parts what does it do you see if you multiply this with a w yeah multiply both sides with w okay so let's say w times Laplacian of w integral over omega that is going to be 0 yes uh, because Laplacian of I mean let, let us just assume that w is not 0 yeah see if w is so let us assume that this is a problem given to us yeah if we can show that w equals to 0 is the only possible solution of this and then we are done right now because if w is 0 u is equals to u delta and you are done right so there is only one solution now um, let us assume that w is not 0 so we can just multiply it by w so w laplacian w that is also 0 okay even if it is 0 it doesn't matter but anyways so integral omega w laplacian w is equals to 0 now if you do an integration by parts here what will it look like omega gradient of w square okay dx this is with respect to dx i forgot to write dx dx this is equals to 0 yeah because there is a boundary term but in the boundary it is 0 w is 0 so the boundary term is not there so this is equals to 0 if you know yeah so this is integration by part if you do not know this please look at the first uh, lecture okay uh, there this integration by parts is uh, done so this will give you see the gradient w square this is a positive function right you are integrating a positive function yeah, um, minus you can just throw it outside it's not a problem no? so you are integrating a positive function over omega and you are saying that is equals to 0 so the positive function gradient of w has to be 0 right so what does that mean it means the gradient of w is 0 in omega right that's the integral of a positive function is 0 so the function has to be 0 yeah 
the function has to be 0. Okay. Now, so if the function, uh, so, sorry, yeah, so function is, has to be 0. So here the function is gradient of w. So gradient of w is 0. Yeah. And it is given that w is equals to 0 on the boundary. Okay. What is w? w is a C2 omega bar function. So it is continuous till the boundary, till the boundary of omega, right? On the boundary, it is 0. And the derivative of w is 0 on the interior omega. What does that say? It says that w has to be 0 in omega, right? So that will imply, that implies w is 0 in omega, yeah? See, if w is non-zero somewhere in omega, yeah, it's a constant. That constant has to be there up till the boundary because, you know, gradient of w is 0 in omega, yeah? If the gradient is 0, then the function has to be constant. If it is a constant in omega, and the constant is not 0, so on the boundary it cannot take 0, yeah? See, if w is a constant which is non-zero in the interior of the domain, that cannot be 0 on the boundary because w is continuous function, right? So w has to be 0 on omega, uh, in omega, and that will imply u is equivalent to u tilde in omega, yeah? And hence, there is a unique solution. So you do not have to worry about this. See, uh, we also proved that the Laplace equation has a unique solution, right? So essentially what it is saying is this. If you have a Poisson equation which looks like this, Laplace and e equals to f in omega and e equals to g on the boundary, huh? of, yes, of course f and g are nice functions. If you are given something like this, then these functions admit a, I mean, you see, I do not know if there is a solution or not. If you just give me one solution, then I can guarantee you that that solution is the unique solution, clear? Yeah? So uniqueness is out of the way. I mean, we don't care about uniqueness anymore. Now the question is, if we can find such a solution or not, okay? And this is the place where uh, it gets a little complicated, okay? Let me give you a characterization of solutions and then from there we will do a little construction to find solutions, okay? So this is a characterization of harmonic functions. Characterization, not harmonic functions. I mean, you know, Poisson, uh, I mean, solutions of the Poisson equation. So characterization of solutions to the Poisson equation. Uh, we want a characterization of this thing. So this is actually, uh, this characterization, this is not very, very important for this course, but I just want you to know how this works. But this is the basis. So essentially, let me give you a small note. This is the basis of modern PDE, okay? If you want to do modern PD, this is what you need to do. I mean, this is all we do, actually. Okay, this is the basis of modern PD um, and is a branch uh, and is a um, topic, I think you can say. It's a topic called variational principle. Variational principle in calculus of variation calculus of variation okay what i meant by this is the uh, below thing whatever i am doing right now the characterization of solutions this uh, this for this course it may not be very very important but i mean of course uh, we'll use this thing but the thing is, is not very important but this is most important if you are looking for a modern approach to pd okay so whatever we are doing is like 100 to 200 years old okay in this course yeah but if you want to do the modern part this is the modern part so just to give you the taste of that modern part i am just doing this part okay so essentially you are given this pozo equation so let me write it down let's say laplacian of u equals to 0 equals to f in omega okay u equals to g on the boundary yeah our usual problem uh, we are calling it one so this is your one now i want to talk about the solution of this problem okay 
and uh, while talking about the solution of this problem i will define define the energy functional okay so what i meant by this is i will define a new object for now you just think of this as a new object called i of w okay and that will be given by integral over omega half gradient w square minus wf okay dx uh, maybe i can put it in a small dx okay so that is i of w yeah and it is not like uh, i mean it is coming from heavens huh uh, it's not like that there is a proper scientific way of how this is coming and this is that is what we are going to um, i mean explain now essentially let me just put down where w is where w belongs to this set a okay and how do you define this set a it is defined as all the functions in c2 omega bar okay such that so you define an a like this yeah you define a set a and you take w like this such that w equals to g on the boundary okay so you are looking at a c2 omega bar function such that w equals to g on the boundary and you look at uh, i mean you define an i which is from this set to r okay so you define i hence i is defined from this set to r okay is a linear functional functional is just a function we call it a functional because uh, it is a function from a function space to r it is taking a function and putting it into uh, giving you back a real number that is why it's called a functional okay sorry it's not a linear function it's a functional okay we got we call it an energy functional so essentially this actually uh, so um, i mean encapsulates the total energy of the system okay but let's not go there uh, let's just talk about what is so special about this and what is the relation between one and this energy functional yeah so for that we are going to talk about a theorem we are going to prove a theorem yeah so it is called a dirichlet theorem dirichlet principle principle okay what it says dirichlet principle it says that assume let u is in c2 omega bar okay and it solves solves one here then i of u which is the minimum okay w is in a i of w okay so what it is saying is if you have a solution it is saying that this c let's say i am looking for a solution of this problem right let us assume that you guys already know what the solution is if there is a solution of this thing that solution actually minimizes this functional is it clear this function is some object right if there is a solution that solution will be in this a of course it is yeah and uh, you see what it is saying is if you that if you put that u in i so i if you put uh, in u in that i in that function then that will give you um, i of u yeah and what is i of u that will be the minimum of, of all these i's okay so it minimizes the any solution of one yeah we have seen that any solution of one there is only one solution to this problem right so what it is saying is that solution actually minimizes the energy functional this minimizes this particular stuff iw okay so you can take any w from this set a doesn't matter that w the value of w is always greater than equal the value of i at the point u where u is the solution of this problem right there is a converse part also conversely and this is very important huh? conversely if if u is in a okay and satisfies satisfies uh, let us call this thing as two okay this two the minimum of this is i of u satisfies two okay 
then um, u solves one solves one so very important yeah and very very exciting thing what it is saying is this let us say that you have a function if you have somehow a solution so first of all it is saying that you give me a solution okay once you give me a solution to one once you give me a solution to this problem one you guys already know that if there is a solution it has to be a unique solution right so once you give that unique solution to me i can say that that solution minimizes this functional iw huh? which is defined by this that solution minimizes conversely if you can find a minimizer to this solution so basically it's saying that if you can find a u in a in this set huh, which satisfies this which satisfies this it means that see it means that there is a function u where the minimum is attained huh, where i is attending is minimum that that is u uh, u okay so basically it is saying that if there is a function u where i is attained uh, sorry the minimum is attained then you can say that that function solves one okay so both sides are true this is called a traditional principle so essentially you see if you want to solve the problem this problem like the, the Poisson equation in an arbitrary domain what you can do is you just look at the energy functional and try to minimize the energy functional okay if you can let's say somehow manage to find a minimizer to this energy functional that then that minimizer will turn out to be a solution to this problem okay so let's uh, prove this theorem to prove So choose, I will prove this part first. Huh? So we choose W in A. Okay, W in A. Then from 1 we have, we have C. If I take everything together, Laplacian of U minus F okay and u minus w huh? w i am taking from uh, a and u solves this one right so i am taking u minus w so uh, this is on omega okay so you see laplacian of u equals to f in omega so this particular thing is zero huh? irrespective of what where w is u and w are in c2 of omega or in a u and w is in a right Okay, so u minus w is also in a, right? So that is sorry, u minus w is not in a. U minus w, so u minus w is not in a. Okay, please remember this thing. Uh, so basically, but it is in C two of omega bar. But u minus w is in C two of omega bar. Okay, why it is not in a? Because on the boundary, this is going to be zero, right? But uh, on a, the boundary u minus w has to be g. If it is has to be in a. Okay, so it is not in A but it is in C2. So basically the integral has to be 0 pi because this is 0. Laplacian of u minus Laplacian of u is equal to f in omega, right? Okay, f in, you can see. So let's la write it like la minus Laplacian. This is just a convention, nothing else, yeah? Minus Laplacian u, u equals to f, u equals to g. So see what I meant by this is. So it means minus Laplacian of u minus f is 0 in omega, yeah? So the if you multiply it by u minus w and integrate it over omega, that is going to be zero. Okay. Now we use integration by parts. Integration by parts. If we use integration by parts, what happens? It is minus Laplacian of u times u minus w minus integral over omega f u minus w equals zero. Okay. So what does that? I mean, there is a dx. Huh? In all of this, there is a tx. I'm just forgetting to write it down. Uh, there's a t of x, right? Now, if you use an integration by parts here, huh? so this is not an integration by parts, which is uh, whatever I write here, it is, I'm using integration by parts, okay? So that will give you gradient of u dot gradient of u minus w dx minus equals to integral over omega if you minus integral over omega fw again i forgot to write dx dx okay right so i have this now let us just look at okay now what happens see if you are doing integration by parts yeah let's just write it 
like this. This is minus, this is equals to 0. So if you are doing integration pipers, there is a boundary term, right? But u minus w is 0 on the boundary. That is why we just multiplied by u minus w. Okay, u minus w, that is 0 on the boundary, right? Okay, so mm, there is a boundary term, if you remember, in integration bypass, that boundary term is not there. Okay, so now what we do is, mm, what it implies is this, c. this implies that gradient of u square, okay, gradient of u dot gradient of u, gradient of u square minus integral omega u f okay, dx dx okay this is equals to i will take that part here so integral gradient of u dot gradient of w i hope it is fine minus integral omega u w dx right again uh, i'm always forgetting dx dx is there okay now if this is there see what does that say this says that uh let us do this thing a little bit you see this is here i am using this thing you guys already know a b is less than a square by 2 plus b square by 2 right that's just a easy algebraic inequality so from here what do you get we get integral omega gradient u square dx minus integral omega u f dx okay this is less than equals to half integral omega gradient u square okay plus half omega gradient w square minus integral omega u w dx yeah how is it coming see integral over omega gradient u dot gradient so integral over omega gradient u dot gradient w okay this is dominated by integral over omega gradient mod gradient u dot mod gradient w yeah and then you use this inequality to get this right okay so once you get this if you take this part here it will give you half integral omega gradient in square minus integral omega u f dx uh, I mean, please forgive me i am always forgetting dx so this is less than equals to I mean, if you want, you don't write dx. That's not a problem. Huh? I mean, I'm always forgetting dx. So um, this is half integral omega gradient of w square, okay, dx minus integral omega u w dx. Okay. So if you remember, what is it? This is i of u. This is i of u, and that is less than equal i of this is w, right? Okay. And since since u is in a, yeah, the, u is in a, right? So uh, therefore, minimum i of u. See, w is any arbitrary. If you remember, see, w is an arbitrary point in a, right? Huh? And u is in C two omega such that u on the boundary is g. So u is definitely in a, right? So you see u is in a that implies i of u is equals to the minimum of i w w is in a yeah see it is saying that this is the infimum but u since u is in a that infimum is achieved and that is why this is the minimum clear okay so you have seen that if there is a solution that solution is the minimum of this energy function let's look at the converse part Conversely, okay, let's say i of u is less than or equal i of w, okay, and this w is in A, here, yeah? it is given, yeah, it is given to you, so, uh, sorry, uh, I should write it as a minimum of i w, I, I mean, I want to write this thing, huh? conversely, the, I am assuming this, and I will show that you, sir, so, maybe I can I will write it as, Conversely, let's say this is given to you minimum of w in a i of w. Yeah. Now I want to show that you solve the equation. How do I solve it? So uh, you fix fix a v in 
cc infinity omega okay so basically cc infinity omega i am not quite sure if i defined it it is the set of all all compactly supported compactly supported smooth functions okay smooth functions in omega compactly supported means what i meant by this is so basically support of a function is a set of all those x such that okay f of x is not zero okay the closure of this thing if you take the closure of this thing that set this is called the support of this is called the support of f yeah this is the set support of f is the set where f of x is non zero the closure of that set okay so mm, you are basically and if that that this kind of thing is contained in omega yeah uh, if you are looking at a function such that this happens then we say that the function has a compact support okay in omega so essentially you can think of this uh, i mean let's say a function which is zero on the boundary and some non zero part in the interior that kind of function has a compact support okay for example let's say that's your boundary let's say this is your omega okay one dimension let's just look at one dimension and uh, this sort of function are you talking about okay so this has a compact support yeah because uh, it is non zero in a compact set uh, in this set if you take the closure that is a compact set and uh, it is zero uh, everywhere so basically uh, the compact set is contained in omega and uh, this is a i mean example of a uh, function which is, has a compact support so you start with a v which is a, has a compact support in omega and it is smooth c infinity okay so infinitely reversible and define now define i of tau to be capital i of u plus tau v okay u is this minimizer it is given to us v is a cc infinity function i am just taking the convex combination of this u plus tau v okay and what is tau tau is in r clear now you see uh, i want to look at what i does see uh, u plus tau v do you think it is in a of course it is in a right for every tau in r of course it is why because you see this is the point why we are why we do want a compact support function because v is zero on the boundary for a compact support function right so on the boundary u is basically g okay and uh, since v is cc infinity it is also c2 yeah so essentially this whole thing is in a u plus tau v so i this function therefore i has a minimum minimum at tau equals to 0 right because i of u at the point u i attains a minimum so the small i this will attain a minimum at tau equals to 0 because at tau equals to 0 capital i is u right so capital i of u that is where the minimum is attained so that is why small i attains its minimum at 0 so if it is uh, attains its minimum is 0 i can talk about i prime of 0 that is equals to 0 right prime is with respect to tau so i prime is uh, d d tau right okay so um, of course the derivative exists right the derivative exists and it is i mean you can uh, of course show it is the differentiable is not a problem okay yeah, if you are not convinced please check that the derivative exists here okay so i prime 0 is 0 now if i prime 0 is 0 see what what is happening if that is 0 i of tau okay this is equals to half integral gradient of u plus tau v square minus integral u plus tau v times f dx right this is what happens and that is equals to half integral gradient u square okay plus tau gradient u dot gradient v 
uh, again I am forgetting dx uh, all the time okay so let me do it like this omega plus tau square by 2 gradient v square okay minus u plus tau v f dx okay so this is the case so therefore 0 equals to i prime of tau i prime of 0 essentially see i attains minimum at 0 so i prime of 0 is 0 so that will be give me you just take the derivative with respect to tau if you take that this is going to be 0 this is this is remaining and this is remaining right so it will look like integral over omega gradient u dot gradient v okay dx minus integral over omega v f dx okay this is equals to integral over omega minus laplacian of u minus f dx right please understand i of tau will look like this right so if you take the derivative that derivative with respect to tau that will go inside the integral because this integral is with respect to x yeah it has nothing to do with tau so i can take the derivative inside if i am taking the derivative this term is not there this is this term is only i mean the derivative of this term with respect to tau is only gradient u dot gradient v which is this and here it is tau tau times this one and tau at the point zero this term won't be there okay so the only term which will be there is minus v f which is the derivative of this term is v f so minus v f right so this this now you see uh, this holds this identity okay so let's say that is three so th three holds for all v in cc infinity omega right if this holds for all v in cc infinity omega that will imply laplacian of u equals to f in omega okay because see if this holds for c so this is a small exercise if you want a huh? exercise so let's say u is in c2 of omega bar be such that u times phi this is dx is 0 over omega uh, for all phi in cc infinity omega that will imply u has to be 0 in omega okay that's a small example so it is basically saying that if you have a c2 function such that integral over omega u phi dx is 0 for all uh, cc infinity functions then it means that u is 0 in omega so please do this thing this i will put it in an assignment okay so if this is true then that will imply that laplacian u equals to f and hence you see u u is in alpha so u is g on the boundary it is always given and uh, we have also showed that laplacian u equals to f in the omega and hence u solves the, therefore u solves one okay so what we proved is if you want to solve one the form this equation if you want to solve the one then if you have to find a minimizer of this functional and vice versa okay with this we are going to end this lecture